Well, joining us now to provide tips and insights, it's Carter Cofield, a certified CPA mm -hmm. and principal at Cofield Advisors. Welcome to Fox Soul's Black Report. Thank you for having me, guys. Excited to be here. Absolutely. So let's start here. What, what are the essential steps uh, people should take to ensure they are well prepared for this uh, tax season? I know for me, I'm going to go find a kid. But what, what, do, you, <laughs> <laughs> what do you suggest? <laughs> um, I suggest we get ahead of the curve. I think most people's issues, they wait to April 13th, mm -hmm. 14th, and then they start getting their paperwork and their documentation together. You should have a file on your computer right now where you're taking pictures of your W-2s, your 1099s, all of your statements and getting them to a folder and getting them to your accountant early. One of the worst things that you can do to your CPA, your accountant, is give them your documents a week or a couple days before. So give them the documents early so you can be in the best position to get your tax return filed on time and correctly. So I think if you just get ahead of the curve by getting your documents in place, you'll be better off. Now, are there any specific tax considerations or challenges that affect black folks when filing their taxes? Are there anything, anything specific we should be on the lookout for? Yeah, so first of all, um, New York Times has released an article that, that African Americans are three to five times more likely to get audited than any other race. And this is wow. because we, we tend to try to overtake credits like the child tax credit, like the earned income credit, because we're trying to like, you know, illegally boost our returns and they're targeting people who are taking the child tax credit and, and earned income credit. So if we find other ways, more strategic ways to increase our deductions to get a better refund, then we'll get audited a lot less. And speaking of which, can you go into a little bit more detail and highlight some of the more important tax deductions and credits that taxpayers should be aware of when filing their tax returns? I know I've missed out on a few here and there over the years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one of the best things that we can do is to start a side business because the tax code was not made to benefit uh, employees. The tax code was made to benefit entrepreneurs and investors. So I encourage everybody to turn their hobby into a side hustle because mm. then they can turn their hobby expenses into tax deductions. So if you love traveling, start a travel blog. Now you can write off your travel, your um, videos, your cell phone, and then those losses from your side business get subtracted from your, from your work income, therefore bringing down your income, therefore increasing your tax refund. So at that point, are we getting into like a LLC? Is that what you would suggest, something like that? or? Yeah, yeah. So set up an LLC. Okay. They're they're cheap in certain states, but, but like we're already spending this money anyway. Mm -hmm. If you're using your cell phone to shoot content, then your cell phone should be a tax deductible expense. If you're using your car to drive Uber or something like that, now you're car, you're able to write off a portion of your car. We're already spending the money anyway. Right. Why not allow the IRS to help us pay some of these bills that we're already paying? Come on, Carter. So so tell us, you know, how can taxpayers keep track of their expenses and deductions throughout the year to make sure that the tax filing process is smoother? I know you just mentioned, you know, setting up that little folder on your desktop <laughs> on the computer, you know, uh, but, but what else can we do? What are the tricks of the trade uh, to make sure that we're not caught flat footed around tax season? Yeah. Absolutely. So I recommend um, using a software called QuickBooks. It really allows you to track all your expenses in an easy, easy, seamless way. And then if you are going to have a business or the side hustle, get a separate bank account. So all of the mm. income from the side business comes into this account and then all the expenses come out the account. So now you have one statement to pull all your transactions and you're doing us a favor because we don't have to si siphon through all of your personal statements trying to find these expenses. Oh my, for first thing I need to do sounds like I need to call Carter. <laughs> and, <laughs> and help me out when tax season starts. Uh, listen, there's been a lot of talk about all these changes, these regulations. It is so confusing. Can you claim this kid? Are you getting this back? Can you do this? What impact do deductions and, and these changes, um, what impact do they have and what should people do to continue to uh, adapt to these changes aside from, you know, reaching out to experts like yourself. Yeah, I think staying educated is so important. You mm -hmm. all said something at the beginning that the, the, the tax refund has dropped about 11%. A big part of that is because due to COVID, the tax, the child tax credit was at 3,000 per mm -hmm. child. Now it's down to 2,000. A lot of people were depending on those credits to like get their refund. So I think we have to stay educated and understand, all right, if the law is changing, how can I maneuver myself the best way to get in front of the law? So one of the new changes that the tax 
Cousin Job act enacted upon us is that if you make your money through a business or a side hustle or something like that, you get what's called a QBI deduction, which you get a 20% tax deduction just for earning money as a business owner versus a W-2 employee. So a lot of people that work W-2 jobs, I encourage them, ask your employer if they will pay you as a 1099 contractor mm. instead, of, instead of a W-2 employer, because you will get a 20% tax deduction just by changing the way that you get paid. Oh, the 1099s used to be scary for mm -hmm. me, though, because they, they would pull all my money yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> but but it's so, it, I mean, listen, it's, it's about educating yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah it is. You're right. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, so I wanted to ask you about married couples. This is a question that one of my friends oh, that's had, good. That's good. you know, to, to file or not to file jointly. You know, what, what advice would you give you know, to the newlyweds out there, you know, that are trying to figure out? out if this is the year that they want to file together or not we going separate I'm, I'm 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 asking i'm asking for a friend yeah, i'm about six months in and we going separate baby i can't, I can't handle it just yet it depends it depends if you are okay with all the things that your spouse has going on mm -hmm. so from a tax standpoint it makes more sense for you to file jointly because you get more deductions and credits filing together that you won't get filing separately now if your spouse owes back taxes and things like that, then you want to consider that. Because <laughs> say, we, Carter, we, say, we, Carter we, say that again for the people in the back. That's very important. Maybe. If, if, your, if your spouse has back taxes that they owe, and you file with them, and you're supposed to get a refund, the government is taking your refund and paying mm -hmm. it towards their tax bill. So you want to be very clear on those uh, those initial conversations before you file jointly. So that's <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say there. Don't <laughs> don't get set up, soulmates. <laughs> don't let it happen. Buy your boo. You gonna go from marriage to divorce <laughs> in one tax season. Oh man, Carter Cofield, we thank you so much. You have been amazing. We gotta have you back. Uh, we appreciate your expertise and and shedding a little light on this tax season because you know taxes could be scary for the soulmate sometimes but you yeah you, yeah you, you i try to make it fun yeah you did you, you accomplished just that we this, appreciate this, you this is the good. most fun tax conversation i've <laughs> you, ever had you ain't never lied that was fun <laughs> carter for, for, for irs administrator <laughs> <laughs> thanks day, brother thank you thank you